just truly eating me up. It's like, I feel like I've been hiding something. Nine years, almost 10 years, like I've been ashamed. In my story, nepotism went completely wrong. This has ruined my life, it has ruined my reputation. I can't believe I'm going to tell this story. What's going on YouTube? My name is Hassan El Sadiq. Welcome to my channel. And this episode right here, I, I really can't believe I'm doing this. Um, I, I, I can't believe I'm going to tell this story. Like, really, I, I can't believe it. Um, hopefully, if I tell this story, a younger person sees it and does not make a bad decision whereas that bad decision can follow them for 10, 20, 30 years. I can't believe I'm telling this story but I'm hoping it can save someone else. So I probably should just run the news story. Her Buffalo school administrator and her son now facing federal charges. They are accused of stealing money from the school district. 7 Eyewitness News reporter Jason Grenauer is live at Niagara Square downtown tonight with more on what's happened today. Good evening, Keith. Former school assistant school superintendent Debbie Buckley, as well as her son Hassan El Sadiqi, were both here in federal court this morning answering to charges of theft of government funds. Sadiqi is accused of charging the school district thousands of dollars for work that in some cases he never did, nor should he have been paid for. And Buckley is accused of helping him. Now, U.S. Attorney William Hochul says that back in 2010, Sadiqi was paid more than $15,000 thousand dollars in federal grant money from the Buffalo District for computer services he was supposed to be volunteering for and in some cases for hours that he never even worked. His mother, the person in charge of administering those federal dollars, is accused of changing the school policy regarding timesheets that allowed her son to get paid whatever hours he wanted. And prosecutors say part of that money, around ten thousand dollars, ended up back in Buckley's bank account. You would think it would be a prudent school district which would ensure that those who are in the classrooms are actually qualified to do so, number one, and that they're actually performing the work on the days they say they are, which would be number two. As alleged in this case, Mr. Siddiqui was doing neither and Ms. Buckley was in fact making it all possible. Now both now face up to 10 years in jail if convicted. The Buffalo School District has since changed their policy regarding who signs off on whose timesheets. Now the school district actually did its own independent investigation into Buckley back in 2012. Seven Eyewitness News has obtained a copy of that report included in which is a smoking gun letter in which prosecutors believe helps prove fraud in this case. That's coming up tonight on Seven Eyewitness News at 6. For now reporting live at Federal Court in downtown Buffalo, Jason Grenauer, 7 Eyewitness News. Now, after you watch that news story, you probably feel completely different about me. Um, even watching my videos or subscribing to my channel. Um, but I have to get this out of me. This is something that's been just eating me alive honestly and it's been hurting me to move forward with my life so you just watch the news story and let's talk about nepotism and what nepotism is the definition of nepotism is the practice among those with power or influence or favoring relatives, friends, or associates, especially by giving them jobs. Before I get into this story, I want to give you an update because a few videos back, I gave a, a raw video of me pitching an accelerator for $100,000.
well, I didn't get into that accelerator. And maybe my startup idea is just bad. Maybe I'm just not good at pitching. Or maybe it's because they Google my name. And they find out what you just seen in the video. This is why I will probably never get into an accelerator. It's because all you have to do, the first thing you do when someone's on your radar is Google their name. And when you Google my name, the Department of DOJ, which is Department of Justice, this article comes up. I was a part of nepotism but in my story nepotism went completely wrong but I want to back up because I want to tell you like how I even got to having the privilege of nepotism so this story starts really in 2004 when I'm playing professional basketball in Argentina and I'm cut and I have two choices my two choices are to go and try to get on another team on a lower level and continue to keep my dream alive. And my other choice is to go home. So like any person that's 24 years old that does not know what to do, they ask their parent. And for me, I asked my father, I said, well, what should I do? Um, should I, and mind you, at this time, I'm devastated, right? I'm devastated because all I want to do is play basketball. But I asked my father, I say, well, what should I do? Should I go and try, stay here and go and try to play for a lower level team? Or should I come home? And my father is a blue collar guy. He's a, he was a master plumber. He really didn't believe in athletics as a career. And my father told me that, yo, you're getting old and you need to come back and find a real career. Um, I don't fault my father for that because that was his reality. And as we see now, Through athletics, people have changed their generations. That's nothing that he foreseen, right? So I don't fault my father for that. But as for me, coming back to the United States was the worst thing that I could have possibly done. I was lost, just to say the least, I was lost. Um, I did not have any support. So when he says come back, it was like, all right, we'll come back and figure, figure it out, <laughs> right? Um, I was embarrassed, um, confused. I did not know what I was going to do with the rest of my life. I had worked so hard all the way for the last 10 years to be a basketball player. And many basketball players go through the same thing when their career is coming to an end. But the flip side of it is I still knew that I could play. And that's what hurt even more, is I still knew I had more to give. And I still knew that I could actually play. Now I look at overseas basketball as very, very different because now I look at it as it's common for a player to have a bad game and get cut. <laughs> I mean, that's just the nature of the business of overseas basketball. But where I was at in life at 24 year old, I'm thinking like, man, this is my contract. I'm gonna be here forever. And when I got cut, my whole world came crashing down. So I'm back in the United States. I'm back mingling in the same places that I was able to escape like basketball saved my life to the point where I was able to escape the ghettos of Buffalo 
It's the only thing that helped me to get out of that situation by going to uh, college in Ajuco in South Carolina, then going to Bethune Cookman, and then winding up in, in Argentina. Um, but as I come back, I'm mingling with the same people. Two years after being a professional basketball player, I am charged by the ATF with putting false information on a firearms application because I went to buy three guns for an associate of mine. That's called a straw purchase. And I was sentenced to 14 months in prison. So I did 14 months in a federal prison camp in from 2006 no 2007 to 2008 um so just now imagine where i'm at in my mind like thinking i'm gonna play basketball for the rest of my life in 2004 2005 trying to figure things out and 2006 going you know getting arrested by the ATF. 2006 also was the year my first daughter was born. So I can tell you where I was at. I was like, man, this is, you know, my life. I can't believe my life has taken this turn. And what do I do? And I came home and I started this thing called Swag University. And I did research. I found out how to get advertisers and sponsors. And man, it started, it started coming, you know, it started, it started to be something. And the only problem with that is it was inconsistent. Like the, the, the money was inconsistent. My mother at the time, she's working for the Board of Education. So she says, hey, I can get you a job basically helping kids get onto the computer. So I signed this contract as a consultant to help kids get onto the computer. And I signed this contract for a school called the Universal School. Pay was $80 per day, um, but I never went to the Universal School. My mother said it would be better for you to go to Bishop Timon, which was a high school, it was a boys high school in south of Buffalo. She said that would be a better fit for me. So I went, I did the job that year, nothing happened. Nothing, you know, nothing happened. Um, a few years, maybe two or three years later, my mother gets walked out of her job and it's a huge investigation all on the news and everything like that me personally i'm looking at it like wow i can't you know like this is really fucked up this is really fucked up and um our whole family is just kind of you know just on pins and needles like what's going to happen to you know you know our mother you know what's going to happen to you know our mother and nothing happens, nothing happens. And all the way to the fact that a few years later, maybe in 2004, the board says, the Board of Education in Buffalo says that her civil rights was violated and they give her money for her civil rights being violated because she got walked out of her job, right? So we thought this was great. And at this time, I'm a single father as well. I'm, you know, every single day I'm taking London and Savannah to school. They're going to a Catholic school, St. Peter's and Paul. Uh, I'm building this Swag University thing. I'm trying to build this container store. Um, I'm, do, you know, I'm doing things with kids. So. I'm, you know, I'm thinking my life is actually getting better, you know? And 
in November of that year, I get a knock on my door by two federal agents. And the federal agents come into my house. I let them into my house and they sit down with me and they say, hey, we want to ask you some questions that we know you have worked at the Board of Education and at, you know, at Timon, Bishop Timon, and we just want to ask you some questions about it. And I'm like, cool, you know, I, no, no problem. And they said, if you get uncomfortable with some of the questions we ask, you could just ask us to leave. The federal agents come into my house, they sit down, and they, uh, if you don't know, federal agents are very, very nice. <laughs> if you've never talked to a federal agent when you're in trouble, they're very, very nice. So we're talking and they say, yeah, I know you worked at you know, Bishop Timon and everyone said you did a good job. This is what they tell me. And I knew I did a good job because like, I had a great rapport with the students. I had a great rapport with the teacher. And I used to love working there. I used to love going there to work. So, uh, then he hands over this, this uh, it's like a, a contract. And it says Universal School. And he says, did your mom sign this contract for you? And I'm like, I have no idea. Um, I, I didn't, I didn't know, right? I don't know what she signed. Um, so at this point, they're asking questions about my mother and I say, look, I am getting uncomfortable and I asked them to leave. They leave in January of the next year. So this is, that was November. So we have December, now it's January. I'm getting ready to take London and Savannah to school in the morning as I do every single day. And before we're leaving, my house is surrounded by federal agents. They're banging on the door. I let them in, they rush and they, you know, they, they're yelling my name. They have my street blocked off. Like it was kind of like I was uh, a drug kingpin. And they arrest me in front of my, in front of my daughters. I mean, it was like one of the worst experiences that a person can ever have. And my sister had to come and pick up my daughters and take them to school. They actually went to school with all of this craziness happening. Um, what I didn't know at the same time, I, my, uh, you know, all of this is on the news. So I get arrested. I, I'm in the back of the car and the, and the agent says, don't worry, you'll be out by 10 o'clock. So I'm like, man, this is weird, right? You know, like. I still don't even know what I did, honestly. I still didn't know what I did. Um, I did not get out at 10 o'clock. I wound up getting out at 2 o'clock. No bail on my own recogni recognizance. I, 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 I get out. And my mother, because she had that money, <laughs> from this, her civil rights being violated, she hired me a high-powered lawyer. And the next month, they arrest my mother. And I'm still like, we still don't know exactly what's happening. We still don't know what's going on. We still don't know, like, what are these, these charges? And that was, that was very, very scary, to be honest with you. It was so scary because, you, you know, like, I had been in trouble before. And I'm like, man, like, this may, this may be so bad that I, really, I might go to jail for a long time. And I, because I didn't know. I didn't really know what the charges were or anything like that. And then we finally get all the discovery and all of that stuff. And the reason I was charged was is very very simple actually it wasn't that because this is what the news the news said exactly what you watched that i stole fifteen thousand dollars and i don't think anybody can make it back from what i was doing in my life like as far as working with kids as far as being a you know an entrepreneur and a, a business person i don't think anybody can make it back when somebody put your name on the news and say you stole from the Board of Education, which is a school system, right? So it's like you're stealing from kids. 
and they're very very calculated on how this is brought out to the public and um, how I'm charged is because of two things as it boils down is very very simple that school that I didn't go to the universal school is the school that I had a contract for I did not have a contract to go work at Bishop Tymon the high school the boys school how I'm connected to my mother is that every because I didn't even have a I at that time remember I had just got out of prison in 2008 like January 2008 I think this happened like 2009 and I didn't even have a bank account so every single time and that wasn't the only money that I was making I was making money through selling advertisement for Swag University as I'm as I'm building this production company so that money wasn't the only money I had but every single every single time I got a check I just gave it to my mother and she just would give me the cash so that's how me and my mother were connected on this on this case because it looks like she got me a job I did never never went to the to the to the school and I'm giving her the money and it goes to her bank account so any work that I did at Bishop Timon they said I was a volunteer and that's how I was charged so I want to share this because like I said this has been eating me up alive and this is when nepotism went wrong completely wrong because of a mistake and it's really the only reason they really were able to charge me is because of the mistake that I made in 2006 this turned out to be a misdemeanor and the only way that I could have got out of this situation was to tell on my mother and say that she signed that paper that contract to the universal school for me and I just was honest I didn't know now I look at this and it's almost 10 years later and like I said this has been eating me alive for nine years almost and now I have done many things you know project swag uh, the, the store I did um, the box truck company and now I'm trying to do all dreams and now all of this has come to the forefront I can't even get into an accelerator for my startup because if you just google my name the Department of Justice article comes up and it says I pleaded guilty to stealing the funds from the Board of Education in Buffalo. Um, this has ruined my life, it's ruined my reputation. And it's not what it seems. And how does a person move forward with their life? How do I even move forward with wanting to you know like even when I come home to Buffalo how do I even want to come home to Buffalo when these are things that has happened to me here and like I said nine years later almost ten years later I can't move forward with my life I can't raise money for my business in order to support my three daughters and support my family it's almost like like they want they want you to go back or they want you to work at McDonald's or work at Walmart when that's even, not even enough in order for you to take care of your family. One thing I need to say is, yes, I made that mistake in 2006, but after 
my daughters was born, after I served my time, like I vowed that in whatever situation, I'm just gonna do the right thing. And that's what I was doing. Um, the flip side of it is the nepot you know, the nepotism. It's like, yeah, I was awarded, you know, like I was awarded the nepotism, but man, like I didn't feel confident even trying to go out and get a job. Just like now, like how do I feel confident to go out and get a job if you know if if that's what I really wanted to do? I know I have other skill sets where I don't where I'm an entrepreneur. I know what I am. I'm an entrepreneur. But how would I feel confident to go get a job when somebody can just Google me and the Department of Justice thing comes up and it says I steal? If they look deeper, then they can watch that the video that you've seen. How do I move forward with my life? Like I said, I, I can't believe I'm telling this story, but I have to tell this story because it's a young person that's on the wrong path or that's going to hit a wall and veer down another path and do something that's gonna fuck up their life for 20, 30, 40 years, or even in their life, you know? And maybe they watch this and say, yo, damn, that little thing that, that I was going to do, I probably shouldn't do that. And I still feel bad for even doing that job or taking that contract because even me and my mother's relationship will never be the same. You know, she lost her whole career over this. So she has mental issues, mental health issues. I have mental health issues from this. And for the last 10 years, you have to understand, like I really, you know, or nine years, almost 10 years, like I've been ashamed. Like, I've been ashamed to be even seen in Buffalo because everybody remembers you for that. They don't remember you for the good things that you've done. They don't remember you from being, really being a basketball player. What they remember me for is that. When they said he stole $15,000 from the Board of Education. Now I just want to put in about my, my business or dreams this company that I'm building. Because as you watch this, you will know that no VC, venture capitalist firm, no accelerator, no startup accelerator, you see this, you see my story, none of them are going to invest in me. Just as you've seen the bad video, the bad press that I received, I wanna show you the good press that I've received. And I'm just going to let it play, just let it run out, right? So you can see the news stories and the things that I were actually doing and the things that I actually went to Columbia to do. Well, it all started when a Buffalo man wanted to give people a wardrobe makeover. Uh, Sadiq grabbed a camera and he started to swag out the town. And after realizing he could do more, his ideas took flight. And now Channel 7's Desiree Wiley shows us the man behind the swag. Yeah, while swagging out people's closet, Hasadiq decided to take his project to the next level. Instead of making it all about a clothing makeover, he made it about life change. And he knows about life change all too well. This inner city basketball player has seen the inside of a prison cell, but says God made it his plan from the beginning. Here's his swag story. My name is Haas. I'm the founder of Swag U Clothing. We're simply winning, applying God's gifts. You may have seen Project Swag appear on Right This Minute or right here on Channel 7. Haas Sadiq films documentaries exposing some of people's most difficult life challenges. He has leukemia. He funds Project Swag through Swag University, his very own clothing line. I wanted to give people swag for events they had coming up. Now Project Swag is a collection of epic stories, but what about his story? Who is the man behind the swag? I'm that person from that bad neighborhood. Growing up in the inner city, basketball seemed to be his only hope, and he almost made it. But after falling short playing professionally overseas, he fell apart. I went to, to use my, my friend's uh, 
ID because mm -hmm. I went to buy three guns at one time. With the weight of parenthood on his shoulders, he thought dealing weapons would be a quick fix to his financial woes. I got arrested that same like that same day. The big price he paid, spending nearly a year in prison. It's part of my story. It's, mm -hmm. it, it has to be told. Well, I mean, it was the time he needed to reflect on himself and his future. My mission was to meet and tell the story of disadvantaged kids and families. Now he lives for his children and his show. Thanks for doing this, though. Oh, no problem. I believe that, you know, we go on this path and no matter which way, we all come back to what's, what we're supposed to be living for. If I have if the I have ability, ability to change, to change someone's, someone's life, 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 why not, why do, not it? do it? For Sadiq, that is Project Swag and the chance to make a positive change in someone else's life. And Haas will be releasing his full documentary come this summer. And he, he always shares other people's stories and all of their struggles. Uh, so it was nice to be able to share his. Um, and, you know, it's never too late to change. So. What did you bring? And I brought a little gift. He swagged me out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so he has this elephant that's his signature. And what's really cool is um, some of the kids that he meets, he will let them design their own T-shirt, and he will sell them on his clothing line. So one of the boys was a huge fan of the New York Yankees, so he dressed up who he calls Lee in his New York Yankee you know, swag. I love that. It's very cute. Yeah, very cool. <laughs> very widely. Thank you so much. Channel 7's John Borsa. 17-year-old Tafik Beatty has cerebral palsy and needs a wheelchair. Last March, Eyewitness News cameras were rolling when he got to meet his idol. New England Patriots tight end and Western New York native Rob Gronkowski made a surprise visit to Lockport High School. Tafik? Yeah? Heard you need New Jersey. <laughs> Who was that? Rob! The meeting was organized by Ha Sadiq, a Riverside High School graduate who goes around the country surprising young people like Tafik through his organization called Project Swag. He was like like very excited and I mean he just he loved it. Now Sadiq has an even bigger surprise plan for his young friend, a diehard New England Patriots fan. Tafik is about to go on a trip to Gillette Stadium so he can watch his favorite team in person. It was intended for him to go to a football game in uh, New England at Gillette Stadium. Uh, we weren't able to get him there because of his condition. But now he's been cleared to travel. He's going this Sunday to see New England play. Gronk is going to roll out the red carpet for him. You know, I mean, it's a once in a lifetime thing for, for him. Mostly because this will not be an ordinary trip. Tafik needs a transport van and a health aid, so the expenses are piling up. With the help of Tafik's best friend, Daniel Bronson, Project Swag is raising money for the big trip. We're just really trying to raise money for a deserving kid, just kind of make sort of like a dream come true, an experience that'll never forget, something that he may never be able to do again. And some, once again, it just he's really deserving and something that I feel as though he deserves. Tafik has no idea that he's going out of town to watch his favorite team this weekend. That surprise comes Wednesday morning at Lockport High School. And if you want to help, there is a, crowd, a crowdsourcing campaign underway online at Indiegogo. You can find the link on our website, WKBW.com. Just click on news links at the top of the page. Keith? He'll be surprised. That is Haas Sadiq. He's the creator of something called Project SWAG. It's an acronym. It stands for Simply Winning, Applying God's Gifts. This project is designed to help out two children who are both suffering from cancer. One from Hodgkin's lymphoma. His name is Julio. And one from leg cancer. His name is Jordan. Well, after hearing their, the kids and the family's personal journey, uh, I attempt to make a customized strategy according to, you know, what would you know, be a life-changing event for each kid. Coming to New York City, we are ready. We campaign it. The campaign that he's talking about is an Indiegogo campaign. There are several videos on this Indiegogo page, but the most recent video that was posted to it is Haas's first meeting with Julio. That's so funny. Oh, like and everything. 
You got your name on I love a Yankee flag! I <laughs> <laughs> love that. As you can see, Julio is a huge Yankees fan. His dream is to meet Derek Jeter. Now, Haas has done this in the past for other young children who are dealing with different kinds of illnesses. In fact, WKBW was on hand when Tafik Bailey got to meet one of his favorite celebrities. We have Haas Sadiq via Skype right this minute. Haas, tell us a little bit more of the local TV makeover show and two Buffalo Bills team up for an ambush at a local high school. One teacher and one student took center stage at Bennett High School in Buffalo this afternoon. Local fashion makeover TV show Swag University gave the two a limo and then they ran around town picking up their fresh new look. We gave two males makeovers, uh, the football coach, which uh, he had an anniversary coming up with his wife, so kind of kind of made him stiffy for that. The student, we gave him the makeover because uh, his college interviews, and I kind of like uh, leaned on Donald Jones from the Buffalo Bills to help me out because uh, William is a student athlete as well. I came to Columbia six months ago in search of dreamers that I could support. And here are some of the highlights. We have supported Harleen, who dreams to become a pro skater. We made a collection of hats called Dream Skate Company. And the sales from those hats supported Harleen in his competition and him traveling to Bogota and competing in a freestyle skate competition. Miguel has our ongoing support. He dreams to be a baseball player. Monthly, we pay for Miguel to train at a prestigious baseball academy. We've also made a collection for Miguel called All Dream Sluggers, and a portion of the sales go to supporting his dream ongoing. We have supported Tatiana, who dreams to become a basketball player. We have supported Tatiana by funding an out-of-town trip for a tournament for her to play basketball. We also purchased sneakers to give her the best performance on the court. We have supported Yasmith, who dreams to become an actor and a model. We are developing a portfolio and we are using our connections to enhance his career. We have supported Angie, a runner who dreams to be an Olympian. We have funded trips for competitions to Boca Ramonga and San Antonio. And we have developed an inspired collection entitled Dream Girl, inspired by her dream to become an Olympian that gives her ongoing support to go after her dream of becoming an Olympian. We have supported Afro Neto in the village of Palenque with a collection of clothing which sales go back to support the village of Palenque. We have documented all our dreamers with files that will help them in their ongoing pursuit to go after and achieve their dream. Oh man, I'm so glad that I was able to get that out it's like been something that's been just truly eating me up it's like I feel like I've been hiding something but not really but um, I'm just so happy that I was able to get that out honestly I'm so happy that good or bad results I'm just so happy that I was able to get that out in the world. And I think uh, now I can move forward.